Okay, hello, and welcome to this eSchool News webinar, STEM Lessons Straight from the Classroom. My name is Kevin Hogan. I am the editor-at-large for eSchool News, and I am happy you are joining us today for what I know will be a very insightful and important conversation. This event is brought to you by Lenovo. Lenovo is a $70 billion yes, revenue sir. global technology powerhouse, Whoa. ranked 171 Whoa. in the Fortune Global 500, employing 75,000 people around the world. Focused on a bold vision to deliver smarter technology for all, Lenovo has built on its success <laughs> as world's leading PC company by expanding into key growth areas, including server, storage, mobile, and those are solutions and services. With over 20 years of education technology leadership and a team of experts focused on education, Lenovo offers flexible solutions which are ready to create a secure, dynamic environment for collaborative, lear collaborative learning, excuse me, and a borderless campus. As a longtime partner, Lenovo can deliver complete and customized solutions with our devices, software, and services that are designed to help build skills, empower career development, maximize each student's potential and prepare them for tomorrow's workforce. So before we get into our conversation, I'd like to take a minute to go over some features of the platform that we're using for this webinar. This event is being recorded, so you don't have to worry about missing a thing. Within a few days, you'll receive an email message that contains a link to the recorded webinar along with the PDF of the slides. If you have a question or comment for the panelists, which I hope you will, uh, as your questions and, and your comments and ideas really help shape the, uh, the conversation that we're going to have going forward. Uh, you can use the chat function by just launching that. Feel free to use this as well to contact someone from the eSchool News team if you have a technical question. So with those housekeeping items out of the way, let's get started with our conversation and some introductions. So uh, successful STEM programs for schools have never been more important for them to work Teachers must work together with students to develop critical thinking, communication, assessment, and inquiry skills. The right devices can help students and teachers connect in powerful, positive ways. Those connections boost interactive learning, engagement, and ultimately student achievement. And um, you know, there are no two people who uh, know this dynamic and relationship as well as, as Rhonda. And Craig, Rhonda Howard is uh, the Dallas Independent School District CTE coordinator, which is covering information technology and computer science. Be before becoming a CTA coordinator, she taught graphic design at Skyline High School in Dallas, Texas. Rhonda is a native New Mexican growing up in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and is a graduate of New Mexico State U and the University of uh, North Texas. Most importantly, she is a dog mom of three spunky schnauzers. Olivia, Zuzu, and Max, and loves to travel, ride horses, and find new adventures. Rhonda, thanks so much for joining us today. I usually keep the personal parts of bios out, but that was so great. I just thought that we want to keep that in. So uh, thanks for joining us today. And next we have uh, Craig Ewell. And Craig is the manager of TCA for U.S. Education in Lenovo. Eric, uh, I don't want to leave your, your dog credentials out. Can you give us a lowdown of, uh, of your particular menagerie? Yeah, definitely. So I have two adorable pups myself. One's an English Springer Spaniel named Brooks, and the other one's a Wheaton Terrier named Rigby. And they are definitely um, my fur babies. <laughs> That's excellent. Okay, terrific. So let's get down into the, into the weeds here. Rhonda, maybe we can start off. Give us a little bit of a background on Dallas ISD, uh, the work that you do in conjunction with bringing STEM subjects into the modern era. Okay, so um, Dallas ISD is the 14th largest school district in the nation and it's predominantly an urban population. Um, we have 14 programs of study um, that are approved by the Texas Education Agency. As you stated earlier, I, su I support IT, um, and computer science. So um, with, with um, the growing rise in, in technology, we, we just found a need 
to expose our students to more technology um, courses. And five of our programs that are approved by the Texas Education Agency involve, um, well, range from IT support through cybersecurity. So uh, our, our probably most heavily populated programs are cybersecurity, programming and software development, and web development. We do have two campuses that do networking and, um, you know, but networking lives, lives across really um, all aspects of, of our society. So that's a little bit about Dallas ISD. Um, the CTE department, you know, we, we support all of our various pathways, um, but ju just the fact that, you know, tech technology is moving faster than we can breathe means that uh, my charge is to um, expose students to as much or to as many opportunities as possible within the IT realm. So, or the IT, what we like to call the IT ecosystem. So that's a little bit about Dallas ISD. So it sounds to me that um, the focus is on the, uh, the high school level, the, the secondary level. The focus is on the high school level, although students at the middle school level can take, um, well, it has to be during their eighth grade year, they can take an IT course for high school credit. So that is an option to them. Okay. And it also sounds like these courses are kind of uh, focused on, a, on kind of a, a vocational aspect. So when we're talking about STEM, a lot of times people talk about, you know, integrating their biology or chemistry or the kind of the straight science classes to talk about uh, STEM. But in, in your case, it sounds like there's there's an eye towards career development as well as just academic development. Is that, is there, that fair to there say? There is. Yes, th this is true. Um, by the time students get to their eighth grade year, they have to focus on an endorsement. And so that's where the 14 programs of study um, show up. And so what we like to do, especially with IT, um, you know, we, we want to expose, the, expose them to what life in an IT environment looks like. So we do a lot of job shadowing. We do a lot of um, career fairs, career development. Um, this, and you know, there's, there's a population of student who just loves to program. So that's available to them as well. Um, and they can even receive college credit for some of these courses as well. Interesting. So let's talk a little bit about the technology. I mean, it's, it sounds like with having that sort of angle, uh, you might need some pretty uh, serious gear in order to get these these kids uh, up and running. Talk a little bit about uh, that and maybe how it's different than your overall IT plan. Ooh, that's a that's a heavy question. <laughs> so for three of our programs, IT, arts and AV, and our engineering, we found a need. To, to beef up our systems. Um, the software that, that's out there requires a, 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 a particular system that has a robust graphics card, that has robust RAM, that has a robust processor. So as, well, let me back up a little bit. I started in this position five years ago. I came in as an IT coordinator. It, it was like, I. I won't say I didn't have a choice, but but I didn't because <laughs> I have such a heavy background in IT. I was a campus-based tech at one point, so I know I know how to break down a computer. I know how to put it back together again. I, I I can tell the BIOS from the RAM, those kinds of things. So it was kind of a given that I was in this position. And so as I started um, replacing computer labs, it started initially with the engineering programs because of the AutoCAD that they use. It's um, and Revit and um, now we're using SolidWorks. And so what I was hearing from, uh, from our teachers is, you know, this is a really nice computer. I won't name the brand, but this is a really nice computer, but it can't really handle the system. Can't really handle the needs. 
can't, you know, can't download. There's not enough RAM. There's the graphics card doesn't. Okay, so with that information given to me, um, I went out and looked at each of our engineering programs because we have aerospace, we have um, urban, urban architecture, we have various levels of engineering, but they all have the same need, meaning they needed a robust, robust processor, they needed enough RAM to handle multitasks, and they needed a robust graphics card. Some of the models of the computers um, that I was looking at weren't able to handle that. But my one um, factor that I saw was, hmm, Lenovo's got this, this, and this. Now, full disclaimer, I am a personal Lenovo user. Um, I, I happened on Lenovo when another laptop literally fizzed and blew up on me and burnt my leg <laughs> and so <laughs> I had to go buy another one but you know uh, I I was tinkering and I think at that time um with the with the Adobe products so I know I knew already if it can handle the Adobe products it should be able to handle AutoCAD it should be able to handle SolidWorks should be able to handle Revit and and all of these these um memory thirsty programs and Lenovo did not let me down. And so that's that's how the trajectory started with putting the Lenovo um, uh, products into our into our classrooms. So I started rolling them out with engineering. And then my arts AV teachers who I was supporting at the time were saying, well, such and such teacher got this lab. And I noticed that and they would share their observations. So then I rolled it out to Arts AV because they were needing the same kind of power that the engineering teachers were needing because you know Adobe as as Adobe upgrades, um, the demands are are greater. And so we had a lot of teachers teaching Premiere. And so it it was just an easy, it was an easy switch. And then my IT teacher said, well, I want to teach such and such, and I really can't teach it on this device. But if you give me that same device that so-and-so has over there, so it was an easy rollout to IT. So now, pretty much um, in our labs, you will find, I would say, 80% Lenovo products. Now, not all of them are as robust as what's in Arts AV engineering and IT, like our business labs that, you know, they don't have a need that great, but they still need a great product. And my, my thing that I say about Lenovo is it will run until it doesn't. And you almost, I, I'm very, very, very hard on computers. Um, when I moved into this position, my director said, we need to replace our laptops. And so I was like, oh, okay, I, I know what I want. Cause I have always wanted a ThinkPad Carbon X1. Always wanted one of those. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is easy. And you know, I'm rubbing my little greedy hands and going, yeah, I know what we're gonna get. That, when I tell you that Carbon fell out of my backpack like four times, um, barely a chip on the side, didn't damage like my my LCD panel. It, it just it will run until it. You almost have to drop it from a plane to destroy the thing because it's just it's just a durable laptop. And when as we as we started rolling out other programs, you know, principals would say, "Well, I want this model or this brand." And I say, "But yeah, but yeah, but no, no, no. I want that." And and I would, I, you know, I would continuously say, look, for high school students, this is a robust laptop. Um, it, they were gonna have a hard time damaging it. High school kids are hard on things. No, 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 I, I want that model. And I was like, okay, just <laughs> know. And sure enough, I ordered the model that that principal wanted, but a month later, it was like, well, we've got three cracked screens. 
back to you, back to the business. Craig, does, does, <laughs> uh, does Rhonda's story sound familiar? I'm sure it does. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so Rhonda hit a lot of the major things right on the head when we're talking about Lenovo and education. And one of the big things that stood out to me and something that we focus on here is really the user experience. And that is important all the way around, right? When we talk about STEM in general, when we talk about these programs, we want the user experience for the students to be seamless, to be enjoyable, because they don't, you want to make sure that they stay engaged in STEM early and often to be able to um, extend that through the life of their education, right? If we hook them now, we can hook them for life. And that's the goal of STEM is to engage them, to keep them engaged with the, um, with the curriculum. And the technology, the hardware, is such a major part in that. So whether that is incorporating, making sure that things run as needed, as expected, and perform above the minimum standards so that the students have those experiences and can say, oh yeah, that CAD modeling software was great. You know, not so much, oh, that CAD modeling, modeling software takes forever to load. Oh, that CAD modeling software takes forever to render. Well, if that's the user experience, then we've already failed. We've already failed the students. And so we wanna make sure we're giving them the hardware to make sure the apps can perform just like they're intended to. Upon with that, we want to make sure that the user experience is also great for the students and staff support, I mean, the staffs supporting it. So making sure that, you know, the staff doesn't dread deploying these equipment, making sure the staff doesn't worry about, okay, I have to go to the engineering lab once a week because another issue's popped up. You know, the less that people have to worry about the user experience, which is a big part of hardware design for us, it, that's going to incorporate and also, um, transcends all of the education levels. And then along with that, we want to make sure that we're preparing them for the future. And what's a better way of preparing our students for the future than give them the devices that they're most likely going to work on later in their careers, right? Lenovo's number one PC manufacturer in the world. Um, our workstations have been growing at an exponential rate in the industry. They're known for their durability. They're known for their um, low failure rates. And they're also just known to be tough devices, much like Ron has pointed out. So if we're going to empower our students to look towards the future beyond their, um, their academics just in um, K through 12, but also higher ed, empower them by giving devices that they should become familiar with to be able to um, be successful later on in their careers. Yeah, I'd love, Rhonda, how you were talking about uh, the need for graphics cards and more RAM and, you know, kind of the, the overall trends right now, in a lot of conversations you hear in EdTech is this the idea of Put everything in the cloud and like and the netbook is like all you need is a web browser and you can do you know everything you want a real big difference when it comes to when you're talking to stem subjects talk to our audience a little bit about how you make those distinctions when uh even when you're you're, you're setting up budgets or even when you're having conversations with a principal who might not be as uh geeky as our present company and might not understand the distinction between the need for a a server that's cranking out some serious processing uh, in, a, in, a, in a STEM class. Right. So most recently, I'll talk about my most recent experience. Most recently, I equipped uh, a teacher with an actual Lenovo server. Um, he simply wanted just old computers. And I was like, well, no, let's make this real world. So I had I just ordered him a Lenovo server, and you know the the team that I work with at Lenovo and and of course CDW that's that's our particular vendor in Dallas. I see they're 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 phenomenal. They are just phenomenal. I can go to any one of them and say, hey, like I I, I have this need, and I'm not sure what's available, but what can you equip me with? And so I did that, and um, my rep. I hope I can, can I call his name Travis. <laughs> My rep Travis came back and he gave me the specs. And so I, I went to this teacher. Um, this teacher actually came from industry. And I said, is there anything on here that you can do without? And he was like, no, I need everything on there. And I was like, whole beans, not a problem. Put it in. So what we want to happen in that particular classroom, we want those students to get the full experience of running a server. I didn't want time wasted on breaking down a computer, wiping it, 
it, it, I, I just, I didn't want that. I, I want them, we want to make it as real world as possible. So when the students walk into that classroom, they're walking into a networking scenario. Mm -hmm. Now, the next step to that would be to link all of their devices to that one particular server and then give them some real world threats, like uh, maybe a DDoS attack or um, ransomware, something like that. So those are some of the things that we're working on as well. So um, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Um, with engineering and um, arts AV, IT, de depending on the software, but it, it's, it's kind of the same scenario. You walk into the classroom, you're not a high school student. I mean, technically you are, but when you walk into that, that classroom, you're do, doing real world problem solving. And so um, with that in mind, that that's when I, or how I look at what needs to be provided. And then when a principal says, yeah, but I'm really a fan of XYZ model or XYZ brand, then I have to step back and say, okay, I, I, I hear what you're saying, because I never shoot anybody's idea down. But yeah. I always have to present them the alternative. Here's what I know about Lenovo. Here's where we have Lenovo in similar programs to yours on campus. If you want to go look to see how they're functioning, and a lot of times that, that just speaks for itself. When that principal or that teacher goes to XYZ High School and says, oh, wow, you did that on that device? you know, that's the selling factor. So. Yeah. So Craig, talk a little bit about, uh, you know, Rhonda mentioned her relationship with her, with her representative. Um, <laughs> so you can kind of have a relationship where you're sending different technologies in different directions, I'm guessing. And so talk a little specifically about some of the solutions, those heavy RAM uh, servers uh, that you're talking about for STEM education specifically because i think a lot of our audience members right now are probably you know of various different sizes of districts i mean dallas is obviously a really big one uh, but even when, as you get into a smaller size district you have different technologies for different functions right talk a little bit about how that setup is with with lenovo yeah so essentially when we're looking at what our our clients or our customers need, right? And those applications that they're using it for. Um, it really, you know, we can build it up. We can build up your environment however you need, right? Rhonda mentioned reaching out to a Lenovo rep and that's um, quintessentially what I do, right? I support the Lenovo field reps in making sure that our customers have the right, and I'm gonna use this word because I love it, it's the solution, right? We're talking about the right solution for today and the right solution for tomorrow. And those are two big things, right? Maybe your campus is just starting out on this adventure. Maybe you're just needing the hardware to start up, um, start it up, maybe just some laptops or some desktops. And maybe you're looking at investing in one server, or maybe you're looking at converting your whole entire district um, and redoing all of your servers. Depending on your, um, your needs, that's how we can come into play. What are we looking to do today? to get it up and running and how can we build this out to be seamless, to be expandable in the future? You know, whether that be one single rack mounted server to a whole entire um, server room, right? Whether that needs, um, or it meets the needs of maybe just providing graphical um, support for one classroom. Or maybe that means graphical support for the whole entire district or entire department. What are we running in? How are we combining, right? The other thing when you talk about this is, um, as Rhonda mentioned, when you're looking at your campus as a whole, we want to make sure the synergy is there. We want to make sure that IT is centralized as possible to make their lives easier, right? So if you're already deploying um, Lenovo servers, they pair well to understand the tools and, the, um, and all of the support networks pair well with the Lenovo endpoints. And it is going to allow your, your students as well and some of these um, these classroom examples that Rhonda's pointed out here um, is be able to have that synergy across devices to be able to get real world experience in some of these devices so I'm seeing that transcend on a lot of districts not just um, down there in Dallas but across coast to coast yeah that's it, that's fascinating stuff now Rhonda let's talk I, I'm, I'm tired of talking about it uh, but it's still kind of part of uh, our lives and it's you know, kind of the pandemic in the last two years 
about such a radical shift in the way that everyone was uh, teaching and learning. And uh, talk a little bit about your experience during that time and how it affected those STEM classes. I mean, were you able to set up anything remote? And with that, you know, now that we've kind of got, gone through that experience and are back to the new normal, any any innovations and the changes to the way that those STEM classes went about, went about working uh, that you might even kind of keep now that we're we're back to normal? Well, <laughs> I hate to say this, but if it, if anything, the pandemic taught us um, that we probably should have looked at online learning earlier. Mm. Um, but nevertheless, you know, it took the pandemic for us to go, oh, uh, this is new. We got to, we, we got to jump right in. There's not, there's no time to figure this out. We got to jump right in and, and tackle this. So, um, most of our students, um, moved to Chromebooks, but with some of our, um, exams, industry-based exams, they weren't web-based. So we did have to provide um, some laptops. Luckily, uh, some of the campuses that I served did have some Lenovo, um, some Lenovo laptops, and they were able, students were able to take their industry-based exams because we had the right equipment already in place. Um, what that did do on the other end is those companies did have to scramble and figure out an online solution, especially for a district the size of Dallas, because, you know, number one, we weren't going to be able to just rapidly order because there was a backlog because of shipping, you know, shipping demands. So um, I think what's happened now is, and, and I've seen some products, where there are some better, there are more some some more robust Chromebooks um, that that are created by Lenovo and they're that are able to handle some of those those online demands that we couldn't handle two years ago. I mean, it was just it wasn't anticipated. It, it, there was no need for it until there was a need for it. So I've seen some of the the Lenovo Chromebooks and just. Um, the benchmarks that they meet, I think, are incredible. So um, now most of our students are back face to face. Um, they are back to taking their industry based exams. Um, those exams have kicked it up a notch with some of the expectations and the software that's required. So some of the more robust devices um, are needed because the students will now take it face to face. But I couldn't have said that. Well, actually, yes, I could. Some of the students did have to come in and we had to stagger them because we did have enough labs across the district where students could come in and take an industry-based certification because I couldn't take it at home because the one-to-one -one devices that, that they were given just, just couldn't handle the demands. So the teachers would stagger those students and you know, two or three kids could come in. They had to be they had to be spaced out, but that's how we got through that. But mm. you know, if we had not had those devices in place, um, we would we would have really struggled. Yeah, yeah. Now, and I know the uh, the topic is STEM, but let me ask you uh, if we could sneak the A in and talk about STEAM a little bit. I know you, I heard you mention a little bit about graphic arts, but how does that? Um, intertwine into this, uh, into your entire kind of STEM program? So uh, the Adobe, the Adobe product, the Adobe suite um, is pretty much, I equate it to like AutoCAD and Revit. It has those same, those same needs. Um, there, there's another competitor that, you know, they, they claim is the industry standard. But uh, when I was teaching graphic design, we took some students in Dallas to what we call our, our arts district, where you know the, the creative people are. And there are a lot of Lenovo PCs, mostly laptops, laptops connected to dual monitors. And so when people say, well, no, this model is the industry standard, uh, I'm set to argue with them because Lenovo can give that brand a run for its money um, simply because 
I've used it as a graphic design teacher. Um, I had both models in my classroom and I went back to the Lenovo and it was an older Lenovo. It wasn't even an upgraded brand. It was a Lenovo all in one. And I was like, I'm going to use this. I, I, you know, if a student needs to sit here, they can sit here, but I'm going to use my Lenovo. And that's what I used um, when I taught graphic design. And it was, you know, I just used a Bluetooth pencil um, to connect the, to connect it to my all-in-one and I could draw um, on my screen and I would broadcast it on my um, Promethean board. And, you know, my, the lab that I taught in before was a Lenovo lab because I moved from web design to teaching just full graphic design and illustration. And so not that I wasn't familiar with the other model, but, you know, my comfort level was with the Lenovo. So, right, right. Yeah. Well, Craig, you know, for, for folks who are, are listening in here who might not be uh, as progressive or sophisticated when it comes to uh, the stuff that Rhonda has established in, in, in Dallas, do you have um, recommendations, say, for first for steps? I mean, maybe they don't have. You know, maybe they're working on a one-to-one. -one. Maybe they have those uh, like a Chromebook setup that they had to use during the pandemic. But when they hear about these kind of next level uh, classes and, and curriculum that uh, that need those graphic cards and ramps, what what would you recommend as their first steps? Yeah. So within any of the workstations that we're talking about, right, Lenovo deems them workstations that have dedicated graphics cards. The first thing and the first steps would be identifying the applications that you're going to standardize on. That is the most important thing. If it can't support the application, then there's no use putting it in the lab. So um, a lot of times you're already um, locked into current subscriptions, or maybe you're looking at um, other applications to bring on board onto campus. So making sure that you understand what requirements are to run those applications, and then letting your Lenovo rep know. That's how we partner with you. That's how we build up our solutions for you is based on what you're going to use this for. Is this lab space going to be strictly a STEM learning space? Or do you need a little bit of extra power and oomph because this lab is going to be STEM during day and esports at night? You know, what are your current goals? How long do you need these um, lab spaces to be up and running? Is your refresh cycle three years or is it five years? Is it longer than that? Should we invest a little bit more upfront on RAMs and make sure that it can um, reach that five-year refresh cycle? Um, you know, how is the lab spacing? Are we working with a lot of different spaces? Um, do we have a lot of room or are you looking to minimize your footprint in those labs and hide those, um, those desktop units? Do you have hybrid workstations? Um, working environments. You know, do you need equal parts desktops versus um, mobile units? And if you do need mobile units, are those um, going to be need to be mounted or docked somewhere um, when those students come into the lab space? So you're going to need docking stations, or are these just going to be for faculty members? Um, the very basic conversation is going to be looked at how you're going to be using these and what is your goal for the future. Those are going to be the two biggest questions that I ask you: is how are you currently planning on using these devices? And then how, what are your goals for the future with these devices? Um, and that's really going to dictate where in our portfolio you'd land. Wow. That's a lot of homework. That's a lot of homework. But just, <laughs> uh, Rhonda, does that sound like your checklist? That is my exact checklist. <laughs> you took my notes, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> but now in that, I, I also, uh, during the course of the conversation, Rhonda, I've, I've heard you talk about um, your conversations with principals and teachers and, uh, you know, their, their, their favorite brands maybe and, and coming back. How important is that relationship between yourself and the educators and what they want to do when it comes to putting together a, a STEM curricula? I mean, do you find it like, are, are they coming to you or are you coming to them? Talk a little bit about those interactions and, and what our audience here might uh, take away from the benefits of creating those relationships? So my favorite phrase is relationship is everything. Um, I work with seven other coordinators. So um, generally the way that it happens here, um, I, I have been tasked with um, 
I, I guess, specking, specking all, all labs. And so generally, if the business coordinator, business uh, marketing and finance coordinator has five teachers that need, need labs, then we do just what Craig said. Um, but I'm even looking at, is there enough electrical in the classroom? Is there, are there enough um, network drops? Those kinds of things. What is, what is your teacher going to be doing? So initially, um, lab refreshes or lab placements begin here uh, in, in our office among the coordinators. Um, generally, what we what I tell my coordinators, because I, I don't believe in stepping on anybody's toes. Relationship is everything. And I believe in preserving relationships. I don't want somebody else's principal coming to me directly. I, I want them to talk to their coordinator first. And so if I get a principal like Perfect example, um, engineering teacher has emailed me and said, I need a lab. Have you talked to Alex, who is my counterpart? Have you talked to Alex? If they haven't talked to my teammate first, I send them back. And so that conversation begins. My teammates already know what I'm looking for. They, they already know um, because we're, we're not looking just for today, we are looking for five years, six years down, down the line. I have Lenovo labs that could be refreshed now, but they're running beautifully. They're, they're running. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, it's a good thing from the standpoint, it, it shows sustainability of your product, but then I don't have to spend the money right now. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's twofold, but, but back to what I was saying, it, so it starts with my, my colleagues. Um, once a year, we do get together as a team. And I put together a spreadsheet of all teachers that are in our district. And uh, most of the labs that, that I have refreshed, they're in my head. So I kind of know um, what campuses need to be refreshed. Um, we also have construction going on in our district. And so sometimes our construction people are, just aren't careful with our stuff. And so I do have labs that have been damaged. And so, you know, I, I have to look at several factors. Okay, well, half of this, half of this lab is gone because the construction people, I don't know, they, they you know, when they were moving it, they dropped the whole pallet or whatever. And so, you know, just depending on needs. Um, but my teammates and I, we, we kind of make the decisions together. The most immediate ones get purchased first. Um, and then, I mean, I kind of have a deadline in my head of when I like to have stuff rolled out, deployment. Um, and then generally what happens is I meet the team there because I need to make sure it's running smoothly. I need to make sure that the network isn't down. I mean, there's just a lot of kind of boring, boring details that kind of go into that. And yeah. then maybe October or November, principal may call and says, I need a lab. And then, okay, you need a lab for what? I mean, you can't just tell me I need a lab. I've got to know what program. I've got to know how many courses that teacher teaches. I've got to know what kind of software is going to be deployed on that on that, um, that lab. I need to know what, what industry-based certifications you're planning on giving or that teacher is planning on giving. And then, I'll, you know, um, I'll make the decision based on the models that are available. And so a, a big factor is though, can you, because sometimes principals will say, I need desktop computers in lab in room 202, but really 202 can only fit laptops. They can only fit a cow. So um, I never, ever, ever, ever deploy a lab without looking at the room. I've got to look at that room. If I don't see enough network drops, chances are you're going to get a cow. Mm -hmm. um, because we, the CTE department, we don't pay for um, things that attach to the building. Uh, that's, the, you know, I mean, the campuses have their own money for that. So that's why I don't, I, I don't even get into that part, you know. Yeah. But if they if they decide that they want, you know, I've got to have, got to have desktops. 
then I'll give them the, the realistic version. Okay, this room is only this, this, this square footage, so you can only realistically fit 20. I can give you 20, you know, if the principal insists that they've got to have desktops, but we have to look at what's real, so. Well, Craig, let's talk about let's talk about labs and what a lab means in in, in twenty twenty two. Again, there was always this trend like the end of the computer lab, right? Uh, everyone's going to be one to one, and we're, we're not going to need that sort of special space. You look at STEM subjects; obviously, you're going to need a lab. But um, I know also just kind of mind reading our audience now. If anybody has any questions out there, please uh, again, I encourage you to put them in the chat box. But uh, as I kind of channel them, I know when they hear about graphics cards and RAMs and servers and they see the budget prices going up, up, up and up. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about how to create the, that perfect lab that maybe you can share resources with the East, the eSports team uh, or other different types of subject matters. How, how, does, how do we walk through that? Yeah, so to your point, you know, the lab space is definitely not dead. It is something that's needed for sure, especially when we're talking about STEM applications. To your point, um, bridging the digital divide, right? Making sure that we have fair equity in our devices and our technology for all of our students is a real challenge for a lot of districts, no matter where you are. And so, especially when we start talking about higher price tags because of the um, components that are going into these devices, the lab space is going to be necessary. Now, how you approach that lab space is going to be unique to your situation, to your campus, to your student body. But essentially, you want to look at, okay, we're going to be spending a lot of money. These are not cheap devices, but at the end of the day, you get what you pay for. You're getting longevity. You're getting performance. So how do we make the most of these devices? Do I have limited space? Can I use these devices for more than one curriculum, for more than one program? And if I can do that, how can I image these appropriately, manage these appropriately, make sure that there's enough um, memory and RAM and support for multiple applications, not just the engineering ones or not just the art ones, right? They need to be able to support all of them. How are they tied back into our network and our, um, and our files and our system? Um, is there a way that we can uh, meet our students' needs that are off campus? Are they doing hybrid needs? Are they working, you know, not just in a lab space? So then how can we pull out those graphical needs and put it on a server? How, we can do, how can we do the graphical needs and compute on a server and then use VDI solutions or, um, or something like that to get the same user experience remotely on maybe laptops the current students already have, or maybe um, laptops that have a little bit less specs than some of those beefier ones. Um, so you really want to just look at those applications. Now, the great thing about it is when you're booking out or when you're looking at workstations, you know that they can handle these great um, big needs so they already can handle everything else. So they work great in multi-use in multi spaces, right? So if you know that they're gonna be used for um, your engineering labs, you don't have to worry about them being suitable enough for your history labs or your, um, or your English labs or anything else like that. They can be used for multiple different applications. And then what I also like about those lab spaces is much like Rhonda was talking about, okay, maybe engineering needs the latest and greatest, right? They need that latest um, GPU card, that, um, that latest thing. Thing. And so maybe for them, that refresh cycle is a true three years. Well, what do you do afterwards? Well, maybe that now workstation becomes a highly um, usable device for your biology department after they refresh it, right? They transfer it to the biology department and you still got another good three years out of it for what they're needing and what they're utilizing. So there's a great ways to make those spaces and those labs work for you. But the lab space is not dead. Um, it may be smaller. It may not be as needed as many lab spaces, but there will always be a need for lab space, especially when we talk about STEM and workstation. Yeah, uh, Rana, you're nodding your head. Uh, talk a little bit more about your... Your, your, your lab set up and, and, and the need for it and, and how you manage it. So uh, what Craig, Craig hit on something really important that, you know, once you've refreshed and I will tell, I will tell the audience, once we refresh, we still had Lenovo's old, like seven years old that were still viable, still running, nothing wrong with them. The only difference was we needed a, perhaps a more robust graphics card. So um, during the pandemic, a lot of those older ones did go to teachers, did go to um, 
different parts of the campus where they did where they did need um, extra extra equipment. So where we are in our refresh now and the importance of labs, all of our engineering programs, all of our IT programs, all of our arts AV programs, there's not one of our programs that does not need a lab. It, it's and I think AutoCAD perhaps refreshes or I don't want to say refreshes, but rewrites their software about every two years. Mm. And when they uh, put the new version out there, it, it is quite demanding. It's, it's AutoCAD is the one application that I, I really have to keep up with because it's just really demanding. I thought Adobe was going to give me the run for my money, but it's it's AutoCAD. And so um, as I look at, at that particular software, it, it, I mean, the engineering lab will just never, ever go away. Our students are being required to use that. Their industry-based certification is on, is on AutoCAD or Fusion or, you know, for my Arts AV kids, Maya. Um, and, and there will always be that need for a, a workstation, always. There's nothing wrong with the laptop, but there's only so much so much of a graphics card that you can get within the laptop space. So, you know, the NVIDIA Quadro, I can't even remember which one, the last one with that we spec'd out, that needed to go into a workstation. And so that's kind of where my refresh is now. I do have some labs that um, they don't have the space for the workstations. And we are looking at some of the, the more robust um, Lenovo laptops. Um, and then one of my campuses, we're kind of doing something innovative. He teaches Arts AV. And so what we're doing with him is he wants laptops because he kind of wants to make it sort of like a Google, Microsoft environment where there are uh, kind of the beanbag chairs and soft seating and, you know, yeah, that, that, that kind of thing. I'm like, let's do it. And so laptops with, with dual monitors or um, some of the monitors I have purchased for the labs are the nice 27 inch Lenovo monitors. Um, so that's that's kind of one concept that we're doing. That's that's I would say more innovative than a regular computer lab mm -hmm. because he wants it to look like, you know, a typical workspace at any um, graphic design firm. A uh, foosball that, table too. Yeah, you have to have the foosball <laughs> table, right? Say that again. I said you have to have the foosball table then too. Uh, I don't think it'll fit. <laughs> Uh, may, maybe some Legos. I've seen that right. at, at some of these these facilities where they have Legos, so you can uh, get your creative juices going. Yeah. yeah. Well, how, how about in terms of um, you know, Craig was mentioning you know sharing resources with uh, esports teams and things like that. How do you have your setup uh, for those labs uh, in an extracurricular setup, or do you at all? I mean, after you know when school hours are over, are, are those labs still in use for? kids to come in and do homework. Talk a little bit about that. There's yes. an equity piece there so, too. Um, one campus, we have taken like a, some, the older Lenovo's and that teacher is doing a cybersecurity hacking lab with the Lenovo all-in-ones because he got the newer models. I believe what we gave his room were the P330s with the 27 inch monitors. And then we took his old Lenovo's and they're in a corner of the room where he's created this hacking lab. So there is a district IT professional that is on that campus and he's wiped, he's pretty much wiped the hard drives of, of those computers. So now, and then um, this teacher goes, uses virtual, I think it's called virtual machine. And so what they do is um, they can download various software and then um, he is connected with cyber range. And so those same scenarios that I was telling you about the DDoS attack, the ransomware, the, those students come in and that's all they do is, is hack, um, but ethical hacking. <laughs> I was gonna say, not, in, not into the network, right? <laughs> no, no, this is completely off the network. He runs his own network. So he's got a LAN in his, in his room. 
and he connects the student the, those older Lenovo's I shouldn't call them older that those Lenovo's um, connect to the server in Virginia and so the student sits there and all of a sudden they'll get this and it's funny to watch them because the first time it happened when when, they, when we first launched the hacking lab a student got the message across the screen and they literally jumped out of their seat because they didn't expect it to to do that and they were like oh my god what happened what happened i, I was like oh, no. you, you gotta work you gotta work through this attack oh is that what that is yeah you're a hacker now sweetie oh. <laughs> So they get to use their their Python skills or their you know their computer science skills, and it's it's just it's fun to watch them. And then, and then the other kids get impatient because they're like, "Well, when when is mine coming? Well, you have to wait." Yeah. You, you know these are not scheduled. <laughs> these these attacks are not scheduled. They just happen. Right. So yeah, that's that's a, a different scenario where we where we're using Lenovo products after school. Um, we are planning for this esports kind of arena but this is a bigger build out than um <laughs> i initially thought so when uh when when we get to that point we're looking at um putting two bays in the tower and so during the day um the regular campus software and stuff is is on there and then in the evening, we can switch hmm. the bay, switch the, the bay so that the students can do their esports. So that's that's a solution that we're looking at and that we're, we've kind of planned out. Um, but it's it's taking a little bit more time because the space keeps changing um, for for various reasons. So, hmm. yeah. Craig, I love Rhonda's uh, talk about the the reuse of technology uh, and the ability to keep devices. Uh, cranking for uh, as many as five to seven years. Is that part of uh, a, a strategy when you, when you deal with the district to see, you know, how long you can keep, uh, keep the tech going? Absolutely. I mean, I think if anything, the pandemic has taught us is that, you know, our regular refresh cycles are not guaranteed. Our budgets are not guaranteed. So your resources are precious like anywhere else. And you've got to make sure that you're providing a great experience for your customers, being the students and faculty, while making sure that your money is spent wisely. And that's where Lenovo comes in. You know, one of our biggest things is um, making sure that our devices are mil spec tested to more procedures than any of our competition. And they also pass those procedures um, and more procedures than any of our competition, which gives you a device that's going to be around for a long time, um, making sure that, you know, you're prepared for whatever's going to come, you know, whether that means tightening the budget, making that refresh cycle push out one last year. Maybe that means that you need to move things around and make sure that, you know, where one device was a little bit out of date for a certain need, it could be perfect and brand new for another lab in another space. Um, whatever those needs are, we give you the devices that can meet those needs. And we often know that more often than not, especially with Lenovo's, you're not refreshing because you need to. It's because of other applications and interfaces. It's not because the device has gone wrong, bad or, you know, they're not functioning. It's because of external factors, just staying up with the rate of technology change. But what's great about that is that you get to use, the, use them in other areas. And if not, we have ways for you to um, turn around and get fair market value and use it towards your next purchase. So there are many ways for you to utilize our um, the life cycle of Lenovo devices to your advantage, um, whether that means extending your refresh cycle or just getting a great fair market value towards your next purchase. Hmm. Now, I knew the toughest part of the conversation for me today would be to end it, uh, but we are kind of coming up to the, uh, to the top of the hour. And I usually when we have these conversations, I always like Rhonda to make sure that you have an opportunity to give Craig uh your wish list for what's next so like what are, what are you looking at on the horizon that if you had an unlimited budget um that you would want to have implemented into your into your labs when it comes to the stem subjects and we'll see if he can uh, make that happen for you oh my gosh why did you ask me that question <laughs> lenovo has these ar vr Oh, oh, and I researched it. Oh yep. my God, I should have been prepared for this question. Um, so you're talking about probably our A3 glasses. Yeah. Is that, am I talking about the right one? Yep. Oh my God, my teachers are clamoring for that. 
And I'm like, no, not right now. <laughs> I'm not saying no, but I'm saying not right now. And they're like, why? And I'm like, well. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, so that so would be the reality time. and augmented reality and virtual reality that yeah. Again, you, you and then keep, anything you keep hearing AI. about it, but it's like, when is it going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. That, those <laughs> man, uh, the Lenovo team came down, came to my office and we were talking about that and I was just salivating. I was just like, Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's that's. So that's the, uh, the IT director's, uh, Christmas list, Craig, have you, have you talk a little bit about the AR and VR solutions that you guys have? Yeah. So I think I love that because all of this ties together. Right. And what I really love about this is one of the things I love about my job is that I cover all of education and that means K through 12, but also higher education. And what I love about what Rhonda has talked about is that there's this ever blending the lines between higher education and K through 12, especially when you talk about high school are blurring. What Rhonda's talking about putting in hacker labs, putting in their own services are the same exact practices I'm seeing across the board in higher education. They are preparing them to move to that next step. Your number one product you're selling is the education, is the success of your students in this level and the next. And so when you talk about emerging technologies like AR, VR, augmented reality, virtual reality, or XR, the combination of the two, the metaverse, all of these things, these are real topics in today in enterprise. And the way that we give our students a leg up is exposing to them um, often and early these types of um, technology advancements. And Lenovo can do that with our headsets. And I'm seeing this, um, especially in higher ed, but as well Rhonda's pointing out, they have their home, they have their space in this K through 12 environment, because this is how our, our students are learning at home. They're engaging this on a daily basis at home and through other applications. So when you're merging technology with your education, it's only a recipe for success. You're, um, you're going to engage them in an in a understanding and a level that they understand. And you're also going to make sure that they're exposed to technology that's going to be taking over their education for the future. So this is where Lenovo partners with them, making sure that they have the workstation to drive these next level technologies. And then also making sure that we provide them with the AR, VR consoles, whether that be with Lenovo Solutions or partnering with one of our um, industry leading partners, such as Vario headsets. We can do the whole gambit, but this is really what we're seeing across the board. And so I love to hear what Rhonda's doing because she's really, and they are really implementing next level um, education and exposing their students to what they're going to see at the next level in higher ed. Yeah, that, the teacher who asked me about that AR set, VR set, is on this webinar. <laughs> I didn't realize it in earlier. To look. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, oh, he's here. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. And, uh, you know, I see that our time is just about up, so I'm going to wrap things up here. Uh, I'd like to thank Craig and Rhonda, uh, our presenters today, for a very informative presentation. And I'd like to thank all the audience members for, for joining us as well. As a reminder, you'll get an email within the next few days that contains a link to this recording along with the slides. Thanks again for participating and have a great day. Rhonda, thanks. Craig, thanks very much.